Hello, everyone, and welcome to Admissions Live. This is your weekly web show about college admissions for admissions professionals and high school counselors. Um, tonight, we're talking about alumni and admissions and where their efforts merge in the recruitment process. Um, so we're talking with Chris Doyle tonight from Marist College. Um, he's bringing all sorts of ideas about their alumni admissions efforts um, and volunteer programs. So really excited to get talking about those things with him. Um, of course, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to uh, a few of the Admissions Live sponsors. And Admissions Live is sponsored by Zinch. Zinch.com, they are the leader in social admissions. Over 3 million students log on worldwide to Zinch.com and connect with over a thousand colleges and universities from around the globe. Zinch is changing the game in prospective student recruitment. To learn more about them, um, you can email outreach at zinch.com or you can tweet at social admission. Missions Live is also sponsored by Integral. Uh, they are the creators of the Schools app on Facebook. Check out their webinar series about how private social networks can increase yield and retention. That happens this Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and we just sent out a tweet about that and um, a few of the other things that I'm mentioning this evening. Uh, next sponsor up is Scavenger. Uh, Scavenger is a Google-funded mobile game about going places, doing challenges, and earning points. Learn how La Roche College has incorporated Scavenger into their visit program to help differentiate themselves from other colleges. And um, you can check out an article on uh, that tweet that we just sent out. And last but not least, of course, tonight uh, we have Welcome to College. Welcome to College, who believes it's all in the visit. And they've created web and mobile applications to help institutions measure and manage their most critical recruitment tool, the college visit. With over 15,000 ratings on Welcome to College's site, uh, you can check out how prospective students and parents are rating their college visit experiences. And tonight I'm very, very excited to be talking with uh, another great member of the Marist College team. Um, Chris Doyle is going to be joining us. He's the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Marist. Um, he's been there since 2006 and is now part of their alumni volunteer recruitment program. Um, so we're going to be talking all about that tonight, whether you are uh, just starting an alumni volunteer program at your university or you've, you're a seasoned veteran uh, in this. Uh, we have, uh, from start to finish, some um, new ideas, uh, some trends and opportunities, and a big wish list of what uh, we would like to see happen uh, with our volunteers. So I'm um, excited to be talking with him and uh, those of you that are tuning in on the Admissions Live hashtag on Twitter tonight. I know we have a few other colleges represented that are going to be sharing their ideas. Um, so we're looking forward to talking to you then. We got a little bit of feedback. Um, just a little bit of feedback there, so I apologize for that. Uh, sound's been a little glitchy with us this evening, but it's a live show and we're going to manage. Um, so again, uh, let's uh, see you talking it up over on the admissions live hashtag. Uh, any kinds of questions or input that you have, um, things that you're doing at your university that you want to share, or um, questions for myself or our guests tonight, uh, please throw those up there and we'll be happy to address them live on the show. Um, tonight we do not have any admissions headlines. Um, we have... Uh, kind of a combined headline shout out to um, followedu.com. Um, and I just want to introduce you if you haven't heard about uh, who to follow edu. Um, this is a new website that just launched this past uh, past couple of weeks and uh, you can follow along um, everyone who's interested in the admissions live conversation over on their website. Um, check that out. I'm going to send out a tweet to exactly uh, where you can find us on that site. And um, hopefully um, we can start connecting and start talking um, and find others in our field that have uh, found us out there on Twitter. Um, so uh, it's a great resource to use to find other people, but also if you're just getting started, 
um, using Twitter and you want to make sure you're connecting to the right people, um, check out this site, um, tag your interests, um, certainly tag yourself with Admissions Live so we can keep this conversation going off the air as well. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to bring Chris onto the show and welcome him. Hello, Chris. How are you tonight? Good, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to dive right in. I know I skipped through any kind of uh, news headlines or things that we normally do because I know we have a lot to talk about tonight. Um, and I just kind of want to get started by understanding a little bit about how your program developed. Um, when you first started at Maris, I know this wasn't the role that you were hired into. So how did you get involved uh, in this program? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think our program, like a lot of programs that are out there, began, it was a very organic effort. You know, we had a couple of passionate alumni who knew some of the people that worked in the admission office, and they would occasionally volunteer, and a trend began, and then it kind of ended up the year before I came on that there were 20 or so consistent alums who would volunteer their time and, and pretty much attend college fairs, and, and that was the extent of, of their effort. Um, and when I came on, I saw a real opportunity and wanted to try to develop that and asked to kind of take the lead in it. And so from there, um, just kind of expanded on those efforts and branched off now into three or four consistent different initiatives that we know that we're going to do every single year um, with now close to 300 different alums around the country. Awesome. Awesome. So um, let's get started uh, at the beginning, I guess, um, and ask why we would want to have a program like this. Why do we want to get our alumni involved and why do we want alumni volunteers? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think um, a lot of institutions, especially ones that are tuition driven, can benefit because these are people who you don't have to pay to stay in a hotel room. You don't have to put them on a plane to get to where the college fair is or the high school visit or that prospective student who really wants to talk to someone face to face. So it's a financially viable model that really any institution who has alums with a passion for that school can implement. And so that's okay. kind of reason number one. Mm -hmm. um, they also add a credible face to your institution in their local community. Um, just like any organization, whether it's the Make-A-Wish Foundation or the American Cancer Society, um, when you know someone who's involved in those organizations, it adds credibility to it, and the same is true for college admissions. That's a great point. And your school. So uh, those are two reasons why it's good. But then also, they will help you identify students that you may have otherwise missed, that may not have come up in your searches, or who may not have sent you an inquiry. Um, these are students who you know could be out there, could be looking at schools that are very similar to yours, but are just in a different region of the country, and they don't have that or your school doesn't have that name recognition where they are. And so that alum or alumna can help you identify that type of student. So is your program then on a national scale now? Yeah, we're, uh, we're very fortunate. So within uh, about four years of running the program, we've now grown to the point that we have alums on both coasts and uh, in between. So we have people in Texas who are... Uh, doing all kinds of wonderful things down there from um, visiting high schools and sitting in meetings with counselors and students to attending the national college fairs uh, around the state. Um, so we're at that point now where we feel pretty confident that we can kind of move into the next phase and develop our program a little bit more. Very cool. Yeah, and we'll talk about what that next phase is. Um, so um, any other kinds of reasons um, that you might... Um, want to bring an alumnus on or how you might identify those alumni who might be good fits um, to volunteer? Yeah, I mean, the people who are probably already in contact with either your alumni advancement or admission offices are the people that you want to start with because those are the people who are demonstrating their interest, they're expressing to you that they want to continue that relationship with the school after they've received their degree. So those are great people to start with. And then from there, word of mouth will spread pretty quickly, and their friends will find out, and friends of them will find out, and so on and so forth. Um, but on the other side, looking at it from the institutional perspective, in terms of advancement, you know, if you look at alumni volunteer programs, you know, ones that I know of at least, and especially ours, 
the people who are involved in the program are also the ones who are consistently giving to the college or the university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so from the advancement side, it also makes sense to keep them connected in that way. Great. Great. And they may not be the $10,000 givers, but they're, you know, the 50 or 100 or $500 level gifts that, you know, culminated make up a big donation. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've got a couple of questions already coming in for you. So I hope you're ready uh, to answer a few. Um, and the first one is uh, how many of the staffers, if you know offhand, uh, in the admissions office at Maris are alum already? Do you have a, do you see a yes. lot of Maris alum? I know you're, you are, correct? Yeah, myself <laughs> and my colleague who was on the show not too long ago, Brian Ethel, um, all of us in our office except for uh, one person. Okay. Uh, from our VP all the way down, pretty much everybody great. went to Maris. Wow. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So um, the second question is, um, do you have any kind of incentive programs or what would you identify as the incentives to get alum involved in your program or to keep them active uh, in the program year after year? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And um, this is something that I I have a lot of conversations about other people in admission offices who are thinking about, you know, can we afford to support an effort like this and how can we, how can we pay these people without actually giving them a check? Um, to be honest, the type of personality who looks for a volunteer opportunity, they're really looking for intrinsic rewards and they're not looking for you to compensate them financially. Um, so what we will do is, you know, if I'm in Minneapolis or if a colleague's in Hartford, Connecticut, and an alum is with us and goes to an event, you know, we'll bring them out to dinner as a thank you and things like that. But for the most part, we, we don't have any type of compensation for that. Um, so it's really finding those passionate people, those enthusiastic people. And um, do you find that they're um, the people that are already involved on campus as students? And are you doing um, anything with tour guides and ambassadors and... Um, those active graduate stu students that are graduating that are going on to kind of start to fold them into the program? Yeah. That's, you know, if you're beginning a program um, or even if you're maintaining a program, your tour guides and if you have ambassadors, those are excellent resources because they already have the exposure to the admission office, so they, they essentially know what the message is and, and they keep it consistent. And they've already had the interactions with prospective students and families, so now they're just doing it outside of the school that they're attending. That's so that's that's a very, very good resource in terms of, you know, building your program and adding new people to it. Right. Um, that, that, yeah, that's definitely a great place to go. Great. So, yeah, let's kind of um, uh, piggyback on that question. For those that are starting out, what do you recommend they do in order to get kind of all their ducks in a row? Um, and understand what the program can do to benefit them, but also what kind of an effort it's going to take. Um, you know, how do you how do you get something like this started if you don't already have it at your college or university? Um, yeah, so I think the first question is you have to ask yourself what it is you're looking to do. You know, if you are a school that wants to attend every national college here in the country, then you have to ask the question, how can you accomplish that? So a very good place to start is, you know, start small, find five or six or ten people who that you know you can rely on, who have maybe some tour guide experience or have been connected to the institution in some other capacity, and start with them and just have them go with a counselor to a college or in an evening and do kind of an on-site training. And then it also gives you the sense, you know, is this the right person to really interact with families and to represent the institution and is this the type of person that we want out there doing this by themselves. Right. Um, so that's, that's a really good way to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very important to really ask what is it that you're looking to accomplish as, a, as an office, as an institution, and you really have to make sure that you have the buy-in from whether it's your VP of enrollment um, or your VP of advancement or both. And right. Think about how you would want your program structured and whether it would be strictly to support admissions mm -hmm. or whether it's going to be a combination of admissions and advancement or if it's going to be more of an advancement. So you have to really ask the question, who's going to own this? Right. And make sure that you set it up from the beginning in the right way. Right. And I've seen it done at different universities 
Um, you know, I've seen this kind of a role or responsibility placed strictly in the admissions office as a tool that they're using to expand their market reach. Um, I've seen it just in advancement and a little bit more on the alumni engagement side of things is giving them another way to give back, another way to be involved. Um, and I've seen it as a shared position. I know at my institution, um, we have uh, someone that shares that position and she's tweeting like a mad woman out on the back channel <laughs> right now, um, Sheila Shabbat. So, um, you know, uh, there's all sorts of different ways to do it. Um, and um, I think... It, it depends on your institution and how you're structured and what's going to work the best um, for you. Right. But yeah, asking, I absolutely agree. Asking those questions, um, what exactly are you trying to accomplish before just going out and trying to do everything? Um, start small and work, try to build the program from there. So great, wow. great advice. Um, and so what comes next? Um, you mentioned institutional buy-in. That's a fun one. Um, so, um, when you're looking at, um, getting that buy-in, um, you know, what are the kinds of steps that you're taking, um, or, um, what kind of resources are out there, um, that you would point people to? Um, well, I mean, the, the best thing and, and the thing I love most about college admissions is that you can go to pretty much any school's website and find out whether or not they have a program. Mm -hmm. And you can poach their ideas and right. make them fit at your institution. So other schools' websites, I mean, in New York State alone, there are at least 30 official alumni volunteer programs that I know of. Great. Um, and these are schools that they publish this information on their website, and um, it's uh, readily available to anyone who stumbles upon it. So those are great resources to get a sense of what other schools are doing and what makes sense that you can maybe adapt at your institution. But um, you definitely have to assess your needs, and you have to understand, again, what it is that you really want to accomplish with the program. Uh, you have to make sure that not only externally that you have the resources in terms of the alums. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're looking to grow a program in Indianapolis, you need to make sure you have alums in Indianapolis that are there to support you. Right. Um, so very simple things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you have to be sure that if you're going to be rewarding them financially or if you're going to be rewarding them in other ways that you can do that, you know, that those resources are there. But I think the most important thing for any program is that your alums are connected and that they have a central point of communication where they know that they can always go and they'll have the resources available to them if they do ever have a question. So setting up a website or a web page yeah. with those resources is incredibly important. And then you need to support that even further by making sure that you offer them training, whether it's right. on site at a college fair with a staff member or bringing them back to your campus, at, you know, kind of en masse and, and doing a training there or offering an online option for them to, to be updated through a webinar. Yeah, um, and um, that's actually one of the questions that we had coming in. What kind of training programs are you offering um, for your alumni? Um, and I guess we should kind of uh, broadly talk about what opportunities you have for them, too. So we um, sure. kind of already started to mention the college fairs. Um, so there's plenty of college fairs that, uh, you know, we just can't be everywhere. <laughs> we can't be everywhere um, at the same time, even if it's a market that, you know, you're saturating. Sometimes there is a few events in one night. So um, it's, you know, college fairs are not just for those national markets that you might try to expand. It could be something that's right in your backyard um, that you're trying to use, uh, that you, you know, you can utilize an alumni volunteer for. So college fairs is definitely one of them. What are the other kinds of opportunities you have? And then let's talk a little bit about the training. Sure. Yeah, we have um, a program that we started not too long ago where uh, we want to reach out to as many accepted students as we can. And, you know, like every institution, we have our goals, and so we'll select what students we're looking to reach out to. And so all of our alums who are part of our volunteer program, the MART program, Marist Alumni Recruiting Team, um, they will connect with students in their area. So if you're from Rochester and you've been accepted to Marist, you'll get a letter in the mail from one of our alums who lives in your area. And it's just a way for us to kind of continue the dialogue with them without doing it directly through the admission office and giving them a chance to speak directly with someone who has firsthand experience about the institution and understands it without, you know, going through us and 
we find that students are often intimidated to call the admission office even after the point of acceptance, and they want just another avenue of communication. So that's worked out really well. The other thing that we've done to kind of piggyback on that, we also have um, all of our alums, we have all of their information, and they write letters every year. And so if you graduated, let's say, from uh, New Paltz High School, and you graduate from Marist, then any student that's accepted from New Paltz High School that year, whether they live in New Paltz, New York, or they live in Hawaii, that student will get a letter from you saying, you know, congratulations on your acceptance. I understand you're considering Marist. Just so you know a little more about me, I also went to New Paltz High School and then continued on at Marist. Very cool. So very cool. kind of bridging that gap and continuing that communication again. So that's another thing. They also come back and they help out with open house. Um, and again, those are usually local alums. It makes sense for them to do that. They have the time. Um, but we do have some alums that travel from a distance to come up and, and volunteer and help out with that. And uh, other types of outreach kind of along those lines. Uh, national College Fairs for us, that was something I wanted to make sure that we had as much exposure as possible at the National College Fairs. So for the last uh, three years now, we've been able to cover over 90% of the National College Fairs in the country in the fall and the spring. And that's primarily because of our alumni volunteers. And I'm going to stop you right there because a little bit of the back channel, um, we've got some folks talking about national college fairs. Um, yeah. and one comment was um, from someone that has been a volunteer and um, in standing and manning that uh, college fair booth, they realized how much they didn't know about all of the different programs um, that were offered at their university. So, um, you know, there's... There can definitely be an information overload uh, or kind of a shock of, you know, the kinds of questions that um, admissions folks tend to get at the college fairs. Um, so training um, definitely is a key there. Um, and the other comment that kind of goes along with this is um, uh, someone who had been next to a, a, an alumni representative that wasn't doing a great job. Um, at a national college fair. So um, that might have been, hopefully that wasn't the same people, um, yeah. <laughs> but that might have been, um, uh, you know, a, a, a reaction to um, questions that they just weren't prepared to answer. So um, is there anything that you want to say about um, how you are feel comfortable with sending those reps out um, at those big fairs or what kinds of training steps you take um, to make sure that they, they're prepared? Yeah. We, we have um, a policy that you cannot attend any events and engage with any prospective student or family unless you have gone through a training. And that's either an on-site training or through our online training, which we offer. So every single member who joins the program, they are sent an email with a link where they can then continue in the training or participate in the training through the online option, or they can sign up with a member of the staff and actually attend the college fair with them and it does depend on the alum. If we have someone who joins from the class of 72 versus the class of 2010, there are big differences there. And um, sometimes there's a lot more information needed for that older alum who may not have been, you know, as uh, connected with the school throughout their year. So it's a requirement. You have to be trained. Um, if you send an alum to a national college fair, NACAC has its own requirements of alumni volunteers and it's actually on the NACAC website you can get that from them and it's specific for alumni volunteers who are attending national college fairs and some of the national college fairs they'll actually make an announcement at the beginning and ask all of the alumni or volunteers to kind of come up to the front and they give them a little pep talk and then they send them back to their table and then they let the prospective students and families in but for alums, what I always tell our, our volunteers is that the best part about being a volunteer is that you can say, I don't know the answer to that. Sure. Here's a card for the admission office. Absolutely. Call them. They'll talk to you. You know, Absolutely. And so it's an easy out. And so families never pressure them because they know that they're alumni volunteers. Great. Great. Yeah. Great point. Um, they don't have to act like the professionals. Um, they're not being paid to do that job. Um, but certainly providing them with access to the information or quick, um, a quick reference sheet to the questions you know are going to be asked um, 
and then of course providing that backup of uh, contact information of where to follow up with the admissions office with more questions. So um, yeah, those are all really great points. Um, and thank you for sharing um, the that the kinds of training that you're doing um, and offering it both in person and online. I think that's really great. Um, I've seen uh, a few other colleges offering those sorts of um, tutorials online, uh, downloadable resources, YouTube videos. Um, I love the YouTube videos where you can see how to set up the college fair table and those kinds of things. Those are all uh, really, really great ideas. Um, a question about um, some of the on-campus events that you're doing. Um, how do you get alumni volunteers involved in things like open house? What are they doing there? Um, mostly they're mingling with the families and talking with the students. Uh, we have, the way our open house is structured, we do two days uh, each year in April. And so they can sign up for the Saturday or the Sunday and then they'll come back. And so for the most part, they are assisting us in kind of helping the families get from one event to the other that day. And then also at those times where there's, you know, lunch or they're lingering in between events, the alums are there talking with them and engaging with them. And to be honest, you don't have to really convince them to come back and do it because, again, the type of personality who volunteers for this stuff really enjoys it. And so they, they seek it out, and uh, their friends will quickly follow as soon as, they have, as soon as they've done it once or twice. Great. Um, yeah, and um, one topic that we haven't really um, jumped into, but I – I, I want to ask, are you doing anything with your alumni um, uh, by offering alumni interviews? Um, and I guess, um, is an interview required at Marist or uh, just an yeah, option we, or a recommendation? We don't, offer, uh, we don't offer interviews as part of the admission process, mm -hmm. just with the volume of applications and right. staff that we have. We just wouldn't be able to accommodate everyone. Mm -hmm. However, we have used alumni for those students who are really enthusiastic, who've already visited two or three times, and they want that FaceTime with someone else. Yep. You know, we're not going to send a staff member to South Carolina or Florida or California, but if one of our volunteers are there, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a judgment call again, if I think it's the appropriate alum and they can sit down and, and conduct that interview, right. then we'll do an information interview, and they'll mm -hmm. send back kind of a... Um, a supplemental sheet of information about how it went, what the student had to say, and then we'll attach that to the student's record. Great, great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, I'm just checking to make sure we're following along with everyone's questions. Um, I think we've got a uh, request on how to set up a college fair, so uh, a college fair table. So we'll make sure to hunt that down and tweet that out later. I'll add it to uh, this post archive um, the video that I know. Um, yeah. And if you have any others that you, you want to send along, Chris, um, certainly I think, uh, we can. I think Sheila has a video out there that would be a good resource. I think resource, she right? does. Um, so, uh, Sheila, if you'd like to tweet that out now, um, we, we'd like to see that. Um, so we'll, we'll certainly add um, a lot of these resources that we're coming, uh, that we're coming across to the archive. Um, that's going to be up on higheredlive.com. Um, uh, things like the training materials, and I think that NACAC uh, guideline um, would be another one that we'll add up there. Um, so um, let's talk about the challenges. What is, what is difficult in this role? Um, where do you really kind of meet dead ends or run into problems? Um, what challenges you the most? Yeah, for our program, I think the challenge is, you know, having enough time to do everything. Um, you know, there seems to be a million great ideas out there, but when it actually comes down to implementing different things, you only have so many hours to work with that you can actually accomplish it. And if you are changing the way that you're doing things, you have to keep your volunteers informed. They have to understand it. You know, that's their expectation as well is that, you know, they have clear definition of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, you know, in terms of logistics, if you have alumni going to over 100 college fairs in the fall, that's 100 different boxes that you have to send out to different people around the country or in some cases overseas. So just making sure that you have enough of the college banners, that you have all the materials and pieces that you need to get to that person. Um, you know, for us, we have a warehouse that stores all of our marketing pieces and then we get flooded with college fair signups from volunteers 
we have to then go and retrieve it and put the boxes together. And we try to streamline it as much as we can, but there's only so much you can do. And within, you know, the walls of the office, there's only so much space that you can store those types of things. Definitely. And then getting it, getting it back, you know, mm-hmm. because the one thing that I'm adamant about with our volunteers is that if you meet a student and you are really impressed with them, I want to know about it. But more importantly, I want to get their inquiry back to us so that we can put them in our system and begin communicating with them and invite them to campus to visit and those types of things. So, Absolutely. you know, alumni tend to be busy as well. Right. And I'd say nine out of ten are very responsible and they get it back to me immediately. Um, but there's always that one or two that linger that, you know, we don't get it back for a couple of weeks or maybe three weeks. And, you know, that delays the process. So those are challenges. But I think um, in the big picture, they're, they're, not, they're not huge. Right. And comparing it to not making it to that college fair at all. Um, not making that connection at all. I think, you know, you do weigh the positives in that sense um, over some of those challenges. But I, you know, I see that that logistical, um, I won't call it a logistical nightmare, but I see how those logistical uh, challenges um, can really um, slow you down. And, you know, and for for the case of... um, the program coordinators who are also in an admissions role and you're reading applications, you're meeting with students on campus, and you're also trying to organize alumni all over the country, all over the world, um, it can, you know, it can get pretty hairy. So um, organization, I'm sure, is key there and, you know, flexibility and knowing when these rewards do come back to you. So um, it, it is an incredible program to have the opportunity to manage, um, but also an incredible challenge, I know. Um, Are there any other kinds of um, things that you want to point out challenge-wise, or do we want to look uh, kind of on on the other side of the coin and what kind of opportunities um, that there might be to grow programs or um, anything that you might have on your wish list for this upcoming year, or maybe, maybe a couple years down the road, what you'd like to see happen? Yeah, I mean, um, I think in terms of other challenges, it's um, it can be difficult when your program begins to grow at a pace that uh, you have to try to almost keep up with the program. And then you start to get alums who are a bit more spread out in terms of their graduation year. And so you will have a point where you have alumni who are, you know, consistently you're seeing groups of 1980s, you know, getting involved or 1970s. And so you do have to dedicate more time to that training. But, you know, I think if you take nothing else away from it, training is is key to keep them on message, to make sure they understand the expectation, to make sure that they understand the etiquette uh, that goes into the profession and communicating with students openly and honestly. Um, I think, you know, those are uh, the most important things for any program, whether it's you're working with 10 people or you're working with 1,000 people. Um, In terms of opportunities, I mean, opportunities are huge with these programs, and there's been a lot of of benefits outside of my traditional role. I mean, getting to meet alums from all different years who knew, you know, famous people when they were at the college or who are in important positions now, and uh, really building up that professional network and getting to know people outside of, you know, what you would normally get to know in the traditional admissions role. You know, moving forward for us, I think what we're trying to do is branch out so that we we have a stronger presence at the local level. Right now, everything's very centralized, and it comes pretty much from um, our office and then out to the volunteers. And what we're looking to do in the future is move to a model that is uh, at the local level where we would have essentially um, a chairperson of the Maris Alumni Recruiting Team, who then that person in let's say Florida, communicates with all the Florida volunteers. Great. And so does Maris have alumni chapters that you would be reaching out to? Um, would it be Exa- the same group or? Yeah. Um, it, would be, it would be chapters as well as other groups. Okay. So um, chapters are, you know, also a great resource because, again, you have active alums who are pretty much always looking to do more and be more involved with the institution. Great. Um, and, again, 
you know, they know other alums in that region. So that's a very good starting spot for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so are there other kinds of maybe innovative ideas um, that might be opportunities or things that are on um, your wish list? Um, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, I'm thinking about more of those maybe interview opportunities or ways that um, alumni might be connecting with uh, student groups, um, whether it's trying to tap alumni that are teachers in high schools across the country um, or um, leading groups of Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and first robotics teams and those kinds of things. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, are there any other kinds of um, collaborations or uh, ideas that are on the horizon? Yeah, you know, for us, I think um, what if, if it's on my wish list, I think one of the right. things I would love to do is have, um, you know, our top tier students that are accepted to the school every year receive a personal letter from the alum delivered to them, mm -hmm. you know, and and make it a very personal connection for them. Right. Um, I'd love to have them all dress up as Shooter, our school mascot, and deliver those letters, but, you know, financially, I don't think we're going to get that. Awesome. <laughs> um, but, you know, some of the innovative things that I have seen is that uh, parent volunteer programs and alumni volunteer programs are merging, and I think that's a really interesting model and something that can really help expand your efforts and reach out parent to parent. So if you have, you know, let's say for, for RIT, if you have one of your tech students who is accepted, they then get a letter from a current student's father or mother mm -hmm. uh, explaining mm -hmm. why this, you know, RIT was the right choice and what the benefits were and how happy or uh, hopefully how happy their, their son or daughter is at the institution. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the things that I think are, are very creative and uh, really offer a variety of new opportunities and both again on the advancement side for the institution as well as for the uh, admission side. And that's a great point. I'm really glad you brought up parent organizations. Um, I haven't had a lot of interaction with parent organizations, but one interaction that I did have was when I first started in admissions. I was at recruiting in Portland. Uh, Portland, Oregon, not Portland, Maine. So across the uh, country for us, um, and we had a, a couple who um, was really interested in helping at the National College Fair with myself there, and I wasn't sure about how it was going to go. I was new myself, and I had never worked with parents before, but it was incredible the feedback that we got um, having a set of parents there whose child was currently uh, at our school and... Um, especially with that distance, um, because a lot of the parents' concerns were, were um, what's it like with your student across the country, or um, how do they get back and forth, what airline do you take, um, should we visit? Those were all uh, excellent questions to field to the parents, and then I could answer the more um, general um, uh, campus questions or um, the admissions related questions. So parents are an incredible asset. I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, and I, I'd love to see how parents um, might merge into this alumni program um, a little bit more, making it more of a, a you know, a volunteer program um, in general. So great, thank you for adding that. Um, so any other, you know, kind of final last takeaways um, you know, keys to success uh, for those that are looking to start this or maintain or just kind of jazz up their program? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, you have to take yourself to the to the alum's point of view and you have to really make it a, a great experience for them. And so one of the quotes that um, I heard at a conference one time that was specific to alumni volunteers is, uh, tell me and I will forget, show me and I may remember, involve me and I will understand. And so, you know, it really resonated with me when I think about different organizations outside of my professional life that I'm involved in, where I would hear about things or I would see things, but once I actually began doing it, um, I really fully understood it. And I guess that is true in, in my professional life as well for any first-year admission counselor that's, that's out there. You know, they're trained and they hear what they're supposed to do and they hear what the goals are and they understand that but it doesn't click until the end of that first year when you've made that first class and, and you really understand, oh, that's why we visited the high schools or right. you know, that's why we did this. So that was a, a quote that really resonated with me. So you have to always look at your program 
from your alum and your volunteers um, from their perspective to make sure that you're really delivering what they're looking for because if you're not, you're going to lose them pretty quickly. Yeah, great point. Um, so retention certainly is something that's also a challenge, um, but um, comes with great rewards when you get this right. So uh, I appreciate that final closing um, comment, and that's a great quote. Absolutely, you have to get out there. You have to get them involved, show them how it's done, uh, maybe send them out with someone their first go around um, to really get them to buy in. Um, and enjoy the experience. Um, and thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, this is a great conversation. We had lots and lots of chatter um, on the live back channel. So I'm um, looking forward to putting this all together and putting it up on the web uh, and continuing the conversation uh, beyond tonight. So thanks again, Chris. Uh, Thank you. Sounds you're welcome. Great. Yeah. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna be signing off tonight. Um, certainly continue the conversation with the admissions live hashtag. Um, you can get at me at Ashley Hen on Twitter. Um, we've got Chris's email address that we'll be putting up if you have any kind of follow up questions for him. And I hope you will be able to join us next week where we'll be talking about social student ambassadors. I'm bringing on my team of student ambassadors uh, to the show. Uh, because I can, because it's my show. Um, and we're going to be talking about some of the projects that they're doing uh, for me, um, but it's going to be from their perspective. So what it's really like um, to be a student voice um, beyond the campus tour um, and getting involved in social media on the web. So hopefully you'll tune in, chat with my students and myself next week um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday as always. Uh, and thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you then.